Hello, welcome to Dr. Fred Frizzle here, and today we're going to talk to you a little bit about beta glucose and cellulose, and how and, and how beta glucose like can be bonded together in order to form cellulose. So, first of all, what is beta glucose? Well, beta glucose is a monomer, which is basically like, like the same as any other hexo hexo sugar, any other glucose sugar, sorry, which is an example of hexo sugar, um, in the sense that it has an H and an OH. But the OH on the anomeric or first carbon is the other way around. So instead of the H being above the midline, the OH is above the midline. So basically the saccharide bond is still formed in the same way. Because you have your OH on the, on the next molecule, which will be this OH on this one. So if you imagine another molecule here. And then this sort of goes back like this. So as you can imagine, this um, H2O is just two hydrogens and oxygen. So if I circle that, um, that goes off to make your H2O. And then this formation of this bond is called a condensation reaction. So what you end up with, you end up with your C going up to this O that's left, having removed this water, which goes down to this C. Um, and then you've got your molecules here and here. Um, I don't want to draw, draw to you in too much detail the structure of these saccharides, because you should know that from the last video. Are made particularly on saccharides and bonding. So if you haven't seen that one, I recommend watching that because that will give you some sort of insight into how these saccharide bonds are formed. Um, it's basically quite similar to this, but it goes into a bit more detail of particular examples. But anyway, this is particularly about cellulose. Okay, so first of all, what is cellulose used for? Well, it's used for the cell walls in plants, the so cell wall of plants. They're probably thinking, well, why does the cell wall of plants need to be built from this very strong um, chain. Um, and the answer to that is because it needs to keep, keep a lot of structure. So if you have a look at the plant stem, for example, these walls of the stem are made up of cellulose, and these are the cell walls. So if these weren't made of something really strong, then the plant would just collapse, which wouldn't be any good, because the plant competes for sunlight with the other plants, and, and if the plant w w like has collapsed or is broken down the middle, it's not going to be able to compete with other plants. So basically the plants with the cellulose are obviously going to survive by the process of natural selection because they're going to be able to access the light more easily than the other plants. So whatever plant adapts to be the tallest is going to be the best and the most competitive in terms of the plant plant society almost. But, but the point is that cellulose is needed to keep the plants upright in order for them to get as much sunlight as they possibly can and compete with other plants in terms of height. Because obviously if there's a shorter plant, it's not going to be able to compete as much with the tall plants for getting sunlight. Hence why um, in the rainforest you see the top canopy that gets all the light pretty much. And then shrubs at the bottom can't really compete with the top, with the top trees anymore because they're only getting a very tiny amount of light just to keep themselves going. Um, so this is, this is the, a little bit of an insight into why cellulose is important. But the next thing is how is cellulose comprised from these beta-glucose subunits? So these are beta-glucose. Beta is just a Greek letter, by the way. That's why it's got a funny little squiggle. That's not because I'm, I'm just retarded or anything. Right, anyway, so you've got your cellulose walls, um, which are comprised of these. But in between long polymer chains of these, basically a polymer is like 10 or more in this case, because, um, because from 2 to 10, as you've seen in my last video, 2 to 10 of these monomers makes up something called an oligosaccharide. Poly just means lots of. So, so poly is just basically 10 or more um, saccharides bonded together in a, in a long chain or just a long chain of, of saccharides. So, right, so, so basically, in between these long chains of saccharides, so you have lo like lots of these. I'm not going to draw you too many. Um, but the point is, there's a long chain of these, and in between them, there's things formed called hydrogen bonding. So if I drew you some dotted lines with an H there, what happens is the interaction between the H's on these carbons means that they can, the chains can cross-link. So when you have long, long like beta-glucose chains, they can cross-link in order to form something called a microfibril. Now, a microfibril is comprised of hundreds of these chains. So if I draw you them sort of length on, each, each chain is represented by the circle, by the way. Um, you have hundreds of these particular chains, which make up this structure here, this like cross-section. And this is called... Um, I'll show you a bit cross section of microfibril. Now it's important that it's a microfibril 
because this is a macro in a minute we'll get to, because hundreds of these microfibrils form something called a macrofibril. So I'm not going to draw you too much, so I'll just draw you sort of scribbles to represent these and speed things up a bit. So hundreds of these, which are which are all these all these individual beta glucose chains, um, comprise something called a macrofiber. A fibre is just basically a bigger version of a fibril. A fibril just means a small fibre. Macrofibre is obviously the biggest one. Um, and, and basically, like these macrofibrils, fibres, sorry, there's hundreds of those in, in the cell walls of plants. So basically, the cell walls of plants is comprised of this sort of structure, which is very strong because it's got so many of these chains in. Um, so if we have a look at the, one of the tallest plants, 115 metres, tall is something called the Californian redwood. Now, now now that Californian redwood it's obviously adapted to be the tallest to absorb the most sunlight but it would never have been able to get that tall if it wasn't for this this complex structure in the cell walls and that's why this cellulose structure is so important. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and hope it's, it's sort of given you a bit of an insight into the bonding of, of beta glucose in a in a cellulose chain. Um, and I hope, hope you understand a bit more about tree structure and everything like that. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.